Wes Anderson is one of the best living directors right now. He's one of the few directors that can get people to see their movies on pure name alone, and that is impressive in and of itself. So I thought with the release of Asteroid City to go and review every Wes Anderson movie in a minute or less. So here we go. Wes Anderson's directorial debut is maybe my favorite of his. None of these movies make me laugh harder in this one. There are bits and lines Owen Wilson says in this movie that make me laugh so hard that I end up crying. The movie has a really strong central story with Luke Wilson's character and that is balanced out with all of the shenanigans as well that are super fun. The last 15 minutes of this movie might be my favorite last 15 minutes in any movie and the comedy in this movie is just right up my alley. This is one of my favorite comedies. This one gets an easy 10 out of 10 for me. This one is great as well. His second film follows a genius named Max as he gets a new obsession, which is a teacher at his school. Now trust me, the film is actually way less weird than it sounds, and it's actually great. Jason Schwartzman as Max is great, and the dynamics and storylines work really well here. Some characters though can feel a bit underdeveloped and you aren't fully invested in all of them. But once again, the film has absolutely great direction. You can see more of the Wes Anderson-isms, I guess, in this movie. But this film much more relies on how much you enjoy Max and his character. I think he is great, and that makes this film, for me at least, a blast to watch. I think this movie movie's great, and I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The Royal Tenenbaums is a really good movie as well, but I just think I like it a lot less compared to other people. It has a great cast, and once again has incredible direction and a fun energy, but I was just not that invested in these characters for the first half of the movie. The whole storyline just feels a bit cliche with the dad coming back to the family, and I know that's the point, but it takes a while for me to get into the groove of this movie until we get to that scene. Now I obviously can't show this scene because of YouTube, but I love how much the movie tonally shifts. I think from then on out, it's absolutely great and really nails these characters and shows how real they are and how they would react to that type of situation. Also, the ending of the movie is so fun. It has bottle rocket energy, and that's what I'm looking for in a good movie. And I really had a lot of fun in the back half of this movie. So, uh, I don't know. I might give it an 8, maybe a 7. It doesn't matter. These are number scores. Whatever. Next one. I really enjoyed my time with Steve Zissou, but this is a film where I appreciated much more of the visuals in the movie than the actual story. This is easily Wes Anderson's most distinct movie he has ever made, giving us Willem Dafoe in these shorts, which is just incredible and a blessing on society, and overall I love the style and production design of the movie. But the actual story of Steve and his estranged son is just not as compelling as I would have wanted. Also there's a love triangle that is fun but not super deep, and the best part of the story is at the ending where we see Steve meet the final shark at the end, but I ended up wishing that we could have learned more about Steve and spent more time with him and his actual emotions and character. I also think this movie really could have benefited from being the usual 90 minutes at Wes Anderson runtime, a lot of it goes on a bit too long, but I did really enjoy my time in this movie, and if there's one movie I'd want to actually live in from all of these, it'd be this one. 7 out of 10. This one I just didn't really connect with. The whole story of three guys going on a spiritual bonding trip to India is just an idea and concept to me that just feels so boring and stale, and it is brought to life by an extremely fun cast and a playful direction throughout, but it's just a film that I respected but never was really able to connect to. Out of all of his films, this is probably the one I'm least likely to go back to, but still, it's a quality film. It's got an incredible cast, great visuals, and a competent, if a little generic story. Don't have a ton to say on this one, 6 out of 10, let's go on to the one with the fox, I love this one. I adore this film, but there is a single movie on this list that completely changes every time I watch it, it's this movie. There's always a little detail or a little thematic underline that I never notice, and I always notice something new on each rewatch. It's such a vibrant and exciting world to constantly return to. I love coming back to this movie, and I love all of these characters. Yeah, it's a great movie, most people love this movie, and there's tons of YouTubers who've done video analysis on it, so I don't have that much to say, it's great, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10, really like this movie. Moonrise Kingdom is also really good. This movie sits on the same wavelength as a movie like Where the Wild Things Are, as it's a simple child story with a much deeper emotional underlying tone. One thing I love about it is how much it's clearly inspired other films I've loved, such as Hunt for the Wilder People or Jojo Rabbit, and this movie itself is also really good. That said, watching this movie is just miserable. It's pretty painful just watching this kid get absolutely railed on for an hour and a half. I should have picked a better phrase for that. Some people might be mad at me that I didn't love it, but I thought it was pretty good, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I adore everything about this movie. It's a movie I can say without a doubt is a masterpiece. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. It's one of the most visually and stylistically unique films ever made, and it has some of my favorite characters and performances ever. If there was a single Wes Anderson movie that was tailor-made for me, it would be this, a bright, colorful movie all about the hilarious yet deep adventures of Zero and Gustav. It's so fun and energetic, and I could talk about it for hours. This is one of my favorite movies ever. It's one of my favorite movies to watch whenever I'm feeling down, because it's just so perfect and fun and energetic, and it's impossible possible for it not to put me into a good mood, this is the easiest movie I can rate because it's an easy 10 out of 10. 
Isle of Dogs might be Wes Anderson's most underrated movie since it's in the shadow of Fantastic Mr. Fox as the only other stop motion animated film in his filmography. That said, it's absolutely great. The entire story and world building in this movie is fascinating, and every dog and character is so lovable and interesting. I absolutely love this world, and this is the movie that surprised me the most with how much I loved it. It's one of my new favorites from him. I absolutely love my time with Isle of Dogs. I'm going to give it a strong 8 out of 10. This one is the most Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson movie, if that makes any sense. It's three distinct and separate stories all connected by this newspaper with all of these stories that are so different yet they all intersect at the end. Now out of the anthology series, I think the third story is probably the weakest and not as fantastic as the other two, but man, this movie is so interesting and visually and structurally unique that I don't really care because I've never seen a movie like this. This movie is so stylistically rich that I absolutely loved it and completely fell in love with this world as well. I think this one though does benefit on being completely a fresh experience so first time watching this I absolutely loved it I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 but it might go down in the future because it does rely on you being so new to this amazing world but maybe in the future I'll love the details even more absolutely love the French Dispatch one of my favorites and that was every Wes Anderson movie reviewed in under a minute if you want to see my ranking there it is anyways I have more cool videos coming out and when those come out I'll see you then Wait, did I forget Asteroid City? Is anyone here still? Oh, in case you're wondering, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Shocker. They're all good.